business is booming. We spent £15 billion on soft drinks last year, but with more than a quarter of Brits now obese, that's proving a problem. A new report says taxing sugary drinks could cut the number of obese people by 180,000. So as the weight war continues, Lisa may soon be paying more pounds for her pop. Well, joining us now are Dr. Asim Malhotra, who's a heart specialist, and Gavin Partington from the British Soft Drinks Association. Morning to you both. Good morning, morning. Asim, first of all, uh, obviously Lisa was an extreme example, drinking that many cans a day. But it, uh, sugary drinks really as bad for us as cigarettes and alcohol? Because that's what this is suggesting, really. Absolutely, or well, I believe they are. So if you take a full sugared can of cola, for example, you've got nine teaspoons of added sugar. Now, what the public needs to know is you do not need any carbohydrate from added sugar whatsoever. And in fact, the emerging science is telling us that such drinks increase the risk of obesity, type 2 diabetes, leading to cardiovascular disease. Even one of these drinks consumed per day, in a very interesting study published by Imperial College, increase the risk of type 2 diabetes independent of body weight. So absolutely, these are really, in my view, these are toxic products. There are lots of things that cause obesity and cause diabetes, though, aren't there? Aren't we just demonising one thing here? And maybe getting the wrong message out, really, that if you cut out fizzy drinks, you'll, you'll be OK. Sure. But I think we need to learn lessons from what happened with tobacco. We know that taxing cigarettes, for example, reduce consumption. And this has come from a very respected source. These are Oxford researchers who have analysed data and calculated that this would prevent over 200,000 people from becoming overweight and 180,000 people from becoming obese. Those are very impressive figures, Gavin, aren't they? And it is, it is a fact these fizzy drinks have absolutely no nutritional value at all, do they? Well, I don't accept the points that are being made. And, you know, I'm not sure it helps the mums and dads watching this programme this morning to tell them and their children that uh, soft drinks are the equivalent to tobacco. They're very different. One cigarette is bad for your health, one soft drink is not. Indeed, there are plenty of soft drinks which are actually healthy, including juice, which, of course, provides one of your five a day. Well, so the fizzy ones, let's, let's just get this into perspective, John. If we're talking about fizzy drinks, the truth is that the market has changed dramatically. You've had some pictures there of the soft drinks and the supermarket shelves. In the last 20 years, the proportion of soft drinks with no sugar or low sugar have actually increased from 30% of the market to 60%. And that is the way the market is moving. So we need to encourage change using the alarmist tactics that uh, Asim adopts here in terms of comparison with tobacco. I don't think serves anybody's interest. Are you being I alarmist? I would, not at all. We have a public health crisis. I would say, in fact, it's a public health scandal that we have allowed to get, uh, the situation to get to the point where one in three children in the UK are now overweight or obese by the time they leave primary school, 60% of the adult UK population. And as you already said, there is no nutritional value in these products. They contribute to tooth decay. Um, and to be honest, you don't need any energy or any carbohydrate from added sugar at all. And in fact, uh, the one thing I would agree with Gavin on is it's not just about sugary drinks. We have a whole problem with sugar within processed foods. In fact, half of foods that people don't even could perceive as being junk foods have got added sugar in it. This is why I seem, I think it's misguided and to demonize the word you yourself used a product like soft drinks, which comprise just 2% of the calories in the ordinary diet. Well, just so quickly to both of you. To what actually a, punish them in that way seems very misguided. What about diet drinks? Like do you, are, they, are they that much better for you? And would you accept, say, a tax on, on non-diet drinks and a subsidy on diet drinks to maybe encourage well, people to shift? I, I think well, there's, more, I think because, there's, sorry, there's on, emerging science in terms of diet drinks. Personally, I wouldn't consume them or recommend them. Um, and again, we haven't got enough data, but there is some study that suggests that people who consume diet drinks will seek sugar elsewhere. And in fact, some comparisons have been done which show that those people actually end up becoming more overweight or really? I, This is about choice. There is a huge range of choice out there. Let's get more people drinking low and no calorie drinks if that's what they want. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with having an occasional can of Coke if that's what you choose to have. As long as you recognize you have to have a balanced diet and an active lifestyle. Got to leave it there. Thank you both very much, Dee, for your contribution. Look forward to your comments uh, from home. Time now, two minutes to seven. Let's catch up on the weather with Laura.